Right, whilst I'm waiting for my ludicrous delivery pickup time of nine o'clock, and even though I've been here for three quarters of an hour now, it's still only ten to eight, I have been asked a question by Radio One Fan Twenty One, who will be doing their HGV license very soon. And for anyone else who is also about to do theirs and looking for information, they ask, can you do a video on how HGV clutches work? E.g. do you have to press the clutch on and off, then you can change gear, or is it like a car? Uh, when you say press the clutch on and off, I assume you mean double D clutching, uh, where you push the clutch in, out of gear, off the clutch, back on the clutch, into new gear, off the clutch, and then finally we can press on and continue to accelerate. Uh, that is usually referred to as a crash box, and the only place I know they use them is in America. Uh, the only reason I could find they use them is because it saves on bulk and weight, but I can't see that really saving a huge amount of weight. Really, because it's only a few extra components, but uh, yeah, the only re real reason I can think of that it would be done is um, because the, the huge distances that they cover from end to end of the country compared to somewhere like Europe or just the UK is that uh, having a crash box we have to double D clutch to get it in and out of gear all the time is that uh, there's less components in it so there's less stuff to go wrong it's more reliable there's less to maintain uh, and that's the only real reason I could think that they'd have gearboxes like that over here in the UK and the rest of Europe we have synchro mesh gearboxes in all our lorries uh, just like a car uh, since the 1950s is when they first started to appear but it wasn't until the 1980s that every vehicle had a synchro, a synchro mesh on every gear in the gearbox so from the 1980s onwards, we've always had synchro meshes, just like in cars. So, clutch to the floor, into gear, pull away, into clutch, out of gear, straight into the next one, let off the clutch, away you go. So just like a car, a synchro mesh for your gears, away you go. There's a few different layouts, however compared to a car. Uh, small trucks, like seven and a half tonners, 13, 15 tonners, like I was using, had a H gearbox, just like you find in a car, usually about the five to six gears. So gear one, gear two, gear three, gear four, gear five, gear six. And then reverse would be off to the left or the right somewhere. Uh, bigger trucks you'd find uh, a different layout because they'd have 8 or 16 gears or more technically correct 8 gears or if it's got a splitter gear uh, 16 speeds which is achieved by a 2 speed rear diff uh, rather than 16 gears in your gear stick. Um, they're called 4 over 4s because the gear stick has 4 positions. Uh, 1, 2, 3, 4. Uh, neutral being in between gears 3 and 4. And then on the front of the gear stick you'll have a, what's called a range changer or selector switch. And when it's pointing down, it's for the low gears. When it's pointing up, it's for the high gears. 
So if you're uh, in fourth gear, let's say you flick the switch up before you change, and you go to change, and as soon as you push it out of fourth gear, the pneumatics will swap around the gear ratios, and now first gear becomes fifth, sixth, seventh, and eighth. So second is uh, sixth, third is seventh, fourth is eighth. And then on some trucks, not all of them have it, then you also get a selector switch on the side which gives you your half gears. And that's operated simply by dipping the clutch in and back out again. Uh, a third method of changing gears, or a third layout of gearboxes, is what's called a slap over gearbox, where instead of like the four over four, they're positioned on top of each other, you get your eight gears next to each other, so a bit like a car with the H box one, two, three, four, then you have a bit in the middle that provides some resistance and then next to that you've got five, six, seven and eight and it's called a slap over gearbox because the neutral is like the four over four between three and four and you can operate around in them four gears and you'd slap it over the resistance gate bit in the middle and then it will come to rest between five and six as a new neutral point and you can operate in them four gears so what we typically do with that is because i had them on my training vehicle you'd start off in a fourth and you'd push it out a fourth right over let it go back to where it wants to sit in the neutral position then pull it back into six is the easiest way to operate those sorts uh, then you've got gearboxes like this one, which is a manual gearbox, but they've done away with the clutch pedal, and here should be a gear lever, they've done away with that, and it's been replaced with uh, this little lever here, which allows me to manually change up and down the gears, or override the automatic gearbox, and then underneath here I've got a little select a switch so in the middle is N for neutral to the right I've got D for drive and then one more to the right is uh, tortoise for low speed manoeuvres and to the right you've got R for reverse and again another tortoise there now this isn't a traditional automatic like you'd get in a car with torque converters and friction bands and all those sorts of cogs this is a normal manual gearbox and then they've stuck a computer on top of it with a load of pneumatic actuators that changes all the gears for you so all you have to do is put your foot on the throttle as it revs up it'll automatically push the clutch in let off the throttle change to whichever gear is appropriate let the clutch back out again and pick up the throttle without you doing anything uh, there are two settings, you can either in automatic and it will do the gears for you or you can have it in manual where you tell it when to change up and down which is useful for hills but uh, I generally leave it in automatic and I think that's about it for gears and clutches so if you're new and you want to learn that's some of the various layouts uh, no pictures appeared of what the 4 over 4 and uh, was it the slap over gearbox appear that's because the upload didn't like it and the video appeared with the black border around which I don't like it when it does that so I got rid of that and if this video isn't too long I may travel back in time to earlier today when I had a look at the longer trailer if not it'll be a separate video coming up after this so having a look at the longer trailers that are being evaluated so. goodbye <coughs> good day a little information thing here as you can see 
I'm standing next to a trailer here. But uh, you may have read in the paper or somewhere that uh, the government were thinking of making longer trailers by an extra two meters so it'll be up from the current 13.6 meters to 15.6 meters uh, as well as other things like increasing the motorway speed to 80 miles an hour uh, then there was the unfortunate uh, incident on the M5 and the papers were um and ahhing and they would say well they were saying that the government was just going to sort of quietly sweep it under the rug and we wouldn't hear anything of it but apparently I've just found out yesterday that there is a 10 year trial going on for these trailers 15.65 metre demo trailers Uh, what was there, about a thousand or one thousand eight hundred I've read so we've got hold of one here I've heard yesterday so I've just come to check it out today so here it is standing at the front here it is noticeably longer than a normal trailer uh, I don't know if the camera gives it quite what it the perspective it should look like anyway but uh, on a normal trailer it's all the same down here we come down it's all the same but we find one axle we find a second axle then there should be a third one here and the trail usually ends about here but on these ones we've got an extra couple of meters on the back and a gap between the third axle uh, these third axles are rear steer and uh, these trailers have no bigger turning than a circle than a conventional trailer under UK or European law I think it is I have found a couple of links online uh, a couple of links, a couple of videos even uh, that show these trailers working alongside a normal trailer and the manoeuvring aspects of them but uh, I can't get back far enough really to give you an overall view that's about as good as I can get really as surrounded by trailers and that but uh, these new trailers, they do exist. They are being trialled for 10 years. Uh, I don't know how many more are going to be produced, but the links for the videos will be on this video. Uh, watch them for more information if you want it. But I've got to get to work now, so see you again sometime.